Hi, y'all. Well, we had us a big ice storm. And it took a lot of tree limbs down, destroyed a lot of property in the area. But this video is about what it did to our electrical system. And once again, as it has many times in the past, it took out power to tens of thousands of people in this area. And the damage will not be repaired quickly because the lines are down. All the tree branches that came down took the lines down and the lines have to be repaired throughout the area. And in some cases, it takes out other equipment. Transformers and such are blown up as a result of the lines coming down. And, uh, it's going to be a while. They're telling us it'll be a week before we have power. <clears throat> We've gone through this before. And what I want to talk about in this video is a continuation of what we've talked about on this channel for the last year and a half. And that is how to prepare yourself for grid down situations with different uh, layers of redundant uh, backup power. And it's important that we not just put all our eggs in one basket. We had, uh, I've got a friend who has a Tesla Powerwall, and when the grid went down, his Powerwall wasn't able to work because of a communication wire that wasn't talking between where the power comes into the property and where the power wall is. So it didn't have enough power so that when the communication device uh, needed power to send a signal, didn't have enough power uh, with the grid down to send the signal it needed. And so the system threw a fault and so even though he had this big expensive system, he didn't have anything to protect his refrigeration. And the most important thing I want to protect is my refrigeration. I have uh, a lot of frozen meat and other food that uh, will get us through a long, long time if we have electrical power to protect that refrigeration. There are other things that I would like to pr provide for myself uh, and my family, like filtered water and comfort, but you can store water and we can camp comfortably in cold or hot conditions. It's that refrigeration component that is most critical. And so we have about five layers of protection for that. So that if one system isn't working, and another one, another one will be. So let's talk about those. You know, we have uh, on this channel. I'm building a solar shed that contains all the equipment and batteries that we're building to store the energy from the solar panels, and that's great. Wish it was finished. I put it on hold while I was working on other things, and you know, life kind of go get it, Ron. Life kind of got in the way of uh, getting it done, and it's going to be finished soon. Uh, I keep saying that. I just have to have time to focus on it and spend a few days getting it complete, and uh, and it's mostly the focus that's required. So. That's the first layer, because that basically makes it possible for us to take the house off the grid, and we would have never even uh, recognized that there was an issue, except for communication with the neighbors who are all struggling to find power right now. The second layer <clears throat> is this generator that you hear running. Let's go take a look at that. We've, uh, we've got a small generator. It's only 7,000 watts, and I'm going to also post a video on selecting that generator and how I selected it and why I made the choices I did about fuel capacity and, and the type of generator that it is. 
Got a lot of trees down, y'all. It's going to be a long time cleaning up this mess. <laughs> There's a cedar tree. It basically opened up. I mean, all the branches fell. Fortunately, I don't think that any real damage occurred. Didn't take the power line out. And didn't hit the pump house. Didn't take down the rainwater tank for the for the cattle. But it opened it up, and you can see the dirt underneath what was once a stump. Okay, so I store the generator in the garage so that we can be protected in when it's raining and icing. It can run in the garage with the garage door pulled down, and a cord runs out to the pole. We have uh, an interlock here where you cannot turn the breaker for the generator on until you turn the main breaker to the grid off. So you cannot have the generator running, running while connected to the grid with this interlock in place. We also have to turn this breaker off before we do all that because that's for the solar panels and you don't want to run solar panels while you're running a generator or when the sun comes out you're going to blow your generator up. <coughs> By blow it up I mean electrically. You're going to blow some electricals. So I don't want to get too close to the generator. I'm going to do a video on which one that is and why we use it. Let's go see some of the other layers. The, uh, the generator will produce enough power to pump water from the rainwater tank here. <clears throat> it will also produce enough power to provide heat from the heat pump because we have a soft start or an easy start on there. I probably ought to do a video about that easy start. It makes a huge difference. It, you cannot run this heat pump off this this uh, generator, this size generator, if you didn't have the easy start to take that uh, initial load. And then you can't do both of those at the same time. You can't run the pump, the water pump, and the generate and, and the heat uh, at the same time. So if you need to use water, you just have to turn the heater off for a little while <clears throat> while you're pumping water and then turn it back on when you're done. You can't run the electric dryer, but you can do pretty much anything that you need to do. We also have, well, we've got the Prius and that Prius, if you hook a small inverter to it, will provide power to uh, protect your outside water heater, your um, enough power to run your refrigerator and your freezer. And it'll do it a long time because the engine's only going to come on when the battery needs to be charged up and then you can run off of that battery. And that's how we got through the ice apocalypse of, uh, of uh, 2021, two years ago. And uh, I wasn't around. My wife did all that. She's an amazing person. Um, but she did save our water heater and, and protected our stuff. And so <clears throat> that's another layer. Well, let me show you these two layers inside. One reason that we want to use a small generator is because of the amount of fuel that they use, even when they're just idling. A large generator uses a large amount of fuel and it requires a large uh, fuel storage. And if you don't want to store 500 gallons of fuel, then you need to run a smaller machine. And so we store 50 gallons of gasoline for that small generator. <clears throat> and that's enough to run it for about 100 hours little less. Well, if you only run that for a few hours a day, six hours a day, then you can stretch out that fuel supply to last a long time. But how do you keep your refrigeration running? Well, we built this solar generator on the channel. Uh, I have videos about it and the booster pack that goes with it. 
And with this booster pack and this main solar generator, after the conversion losses, I have a usable six and a half kilowatt hours of energy, which is enough to, you can run this, this uh, refrigerator, freezer, charger electronics, and a few other things. You can run all that for uh, maybe four or five days off of just this. And you can hook this up to solar panels if you want. And on a day like today, you can charge this back up with the solar panels and you could run for much longer. If everything else, uh, if everything else were to fail. So here's this, this actually uh, is very useful by itself though, because we can run the refrigeration when the generator is not operating and we can limit the number of hours that we use the generator to a small number. And in a long-term grid outage, that's really important because if we have a serious situation where the power is down for a long, long time, and there are several scenarios where that could happen, getting fuel might be a difficult matter. And so that's why I aim for small equipment that can last a long time on efficiently on a small amount of fuel, smaller amount of fuel, and renewable sources of energy as much as possible, so that we're not required to have uh, carbon fuel supplies. Um, we also have these batteries that we built for the solar shed and the uh, each one of those holds 14 kilowatt hours of energy. So right now, uh, since they're not in the solar shed, we do have that uh, inverter that I hang on the side of it. I've shown it in a couple of other videos. And so last night we hung it on the side of this battery, ran an extension cord into the bedroom here and we've got the uh, electric oil heater that we found out in the garage from years and years ago and this uh, kept this room nicely warm last night without having to run the generator for heat by the time we went to bed last night we were at 65 degrees in the house which is pretty comfortable by itself and then this morning it had cooled down a couple of degrees uh, and now we've got it warmed up comfortably and and we're good to go. So that's uh, that's a lot of layers. You've got the solar shed, you've got the generator, you've got the Prius, you've got the solar generator here, and you've got the additional batteries if that you can use if you have a backup inverter. So we have many ways to supply power to uh, to keep our critical components functioning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make another video. Please, please like this one and subscribe so that you're uh, notified of future videos. I've had a little hiatus where I haven't been able to make videos, but I'm, I'm back and uh, we have a lot of things coming up that are going to make uh, some informative videos that will help you out once you prepare for your uh, for protecting yourself in case of you know things that happen like ice storms and other things um, so subscribe to the channel please I, the next video I'm probably going to post it today as well will be about how I chose that generator out there and how I um, put it into put it into operation and uh, I'll make another one talking about how you can use a small generator like that and still be able to use a uh, heat pump and, and heat and cool your house with it uh, there are a few problems to that that, you, that can be overcome and I'll show you how we've overcome it so that we were able to 
heat our house up even when the temperatures were cold and the power was out. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you learned something from it and uh, I'll see you on the next one.